countless books have been written about setting healthy boundaries, but what does that look like in real time? Our therapist and friend, Dr. Jonathan Carroll, has some guidance for us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Angie. Well, we, we do hear about this all the time. There's so many books on the market and podcasts about boundaries and healthy boundaries. What are we really talking about? At the end of the day, we tend to overcommit ourselves. Uh, we tend to ignore stress signals. Uh, we tend to care a lot about what other people think. And we want to be generous and supportive and of service to other people. And we can do that to a fault. And so it's important that we recognize that we are uh, a self too, and that we need to be on the list of those people for whom we give care. In fact, we need to be at the top. This is the reason why when you're flying on an airplane, the flight attendants tell you that if the oxygen masks in the unlikely event of depressurization, you should put the oxygen mask on yourself first before helping those who might be traveling with you and require assistance, because we're of no good to anyone if we haven't taken care of ourselves first. So, you know, yes, but it, uh, in our society in particular, I think we have that sort of crazy mentality of pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, put everybody else first. There's just this conflict of pop culture thinking that I think stands in our way. It is. <clears throat> I think the uh, cultural milieu has us believing that taking care of ourselves is selfish. Right. Uh, and I want to make sure that we differentiate between selfish and self-interest. Um, selfish is, of course, the, uh, the blind devotion only to self and what matters to self and complete disregard of the concept of other. Whereas self-interest recognizes that as a self, I am a part of this community of people who have the responsibility uh, to take care of one another. And I have to, as a result, take care of myself too. So ironically, the least selfish thing we can do is take care of ourselves. And that's because when we do take care of ourselves, the version of us that other people around us experience is a healthier version. Whereas that version of us, which seeks to... Um, uh, give in to people or care about what other people think or we, we tend to share ourselves too quickly and we resent people who don't give us back. Uh, we, we're, we're resentful of people who ask too much of us. It seems like that we uh, are afraid of letting people get too close because we end up being hurt. There are all these stress signals that we haven't exercised healthy boundaries. So the version of us that other people get is an anemic, emaciated version, like trying to spend time with the Thanksgiving turkey at the end of the meal when everybody's already had their fill. <laughs> Interesting analogy, to say the least. Well, how did we begin? It's just, you know, we've, we're probably already worn out and stressed out and feeling defeated. So what's the beginning of this process, Jonathan? Well, the good news is this is some of us all the time. And so we all can relate. The bad news is it's, um, I'm sorry, it's all of us some of the time. And it is sadly some of us all the time. So first things first, we have to explain how we function to people. I think it's helpful for us to uh, modify our expectations downward uh, so that people uh, know what it is that we expect, but also we don't expect too much out of people people because that's a pathway to frustration and disappointment. Another thing is that we have to communicate. George Bernard Shaw says that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has actually taken place. We mm -hmm. don't communicate well our own needs and our own wants because we do think that's selfish when now we know it's actually the best thing we can do for ourselves and other people. We have to remember that relationships are a, a two-way street. Uh, we need to be 100% honest and transparent with things that we're comfortable with. We have to be real and clear and direct with people. And remember that we're a part of a family or we're a part of a team at work or we're a part of a community of friends, a social group, and not everything is dependent on us. We are human and we have to take into consideration our own needs in our own wants. Jonathan, and we have to protect ourselves. Yes, we do. And I thank you so much for being with us this morning. Great advice. Thank you, Angie. And more lifestyles for you right after this. Stay with us.